Hey everybody, so winter is just around the corner here in Southern Ontario and if you've seen the channel before, you already know I love snowmobiling and this year things have changed. I've moved up here to the north, I'm much closer to the trails now so that of course meant I needed a new sled. So let me show you what I picked up and I'll tell you all about it. Wait right there. Yes, here she is. This is my uh, new to me 2015 Skidoo Grand Touring LE with the 1200 four stroke engine. And I wanna tell you guys all about it. So let me grab the camera and let's take a walk around. So like I said off the top guys, it was time for a new snowmobile because I now live in a place where I can ride directly to the trails straight from my house and my old 1999 Yamaha, which I currently own, it just wasn't gonna cut it anymore. I needed something that was gonna be reliable. And that's one of the reasons why I landed on this. This snowmobile is powered by Skidoo's 1200 four-stroke four-tech engine. Now, this thing has been around for a number of years before 15. Right now, currently, it's just being phased out of the Skidoo lineup but for the time this was sort of the best four stroke you could get from them and most importantly this engine has a good reputation for reliability. A lot of people online on the forums that I went through they have really great things to say about this 1200 and that's what I was looking for something that I could ride reliably for a number of seasons and not have to worry about too much maintenance. And here's another reason why I got this sled it's a two up and again as some of you may know I'm a new dad so, uh, sadly my kids are not old enough yet to ride with me but you know only a couple years away and I'm hoping to get them on the sled behind me so I definitely wanted something that was family oriented and this is what I landed with so now let's go over the specs First, let's talk about the dimensions. So the total length for the sled, and this thing is not short, comes in at just a hair over 10 feet, 10.58 feet. Total width is just a little bit under 50 inches at 47.9, which is not too bad. And then I gotta tell you guys, most of the sleds I've owned have been older, what I consider still sort of classic models. This is my first kind of modern sled. Now, I was surprised at the curb weight, and I know this isn't even the newest stuff, but even in 2015, this thing only weighed 600 pounds or weighs 600 pounds, which for a big old two up in my brain, that's a pretty dang good number just at 600. So, you know, wrangling it out on the trail won't be too tough, especially when I'm riding all by myself. Now, if you want to talk about fuel capacity, this thing's got a big tank, tank 10.6 gallons or 40 liters. And of course, it's a grand touring, right? It's all about spending days out on the trail. So you want to make sure you got a big tank so you're not stopping for fuel all the time. Now, the suspension here is not the top of the line suspension. If you went for the SE model, the special edition, there was actually an air shock in the back here and it's controllable up there on your uh, display cluster. This sled does not have that air shock. It does have Skidoo's R motion suspension in the back, which is adjustable and it's easily adjustable. You can see that red block right there, which has those numbers on it. That allows you to go one through four and pick your stiffness setting. Same thing with the shocks up front. You can adjust the preload right there on the shocks. But no, you cannot go in your gauge cluster and adjust your air suspension because this sled doesn't have it. You had to go for the upper SE model to get that. This is just the LE. Now, all that being said, what about travel? Well, the travel numbers here are pretty impressive. Nine inches of front travel and 13 inches in the rear, which is pretty dang good, once again, for a big old Grand Touring sled. Now, what else makes this thing a Grand Touring? Well, it's all the comfort features. Those mirrors right there that you see, those come standard on the Grand Touring, as does this large windshield. And one of my favorite parts of the windshield, and I'm not sure how well this you can see it on camera, are these pieces of plexiglass here. You can see there's Here's kind of the main section, but then Skidoo adds the second section here that comes underneath the mirror, and that just helps to keep wind off your leg. Actually, this machine is great at keeping wind off your leg in general, just because of its bodywork. You can see all this plastic cladding really does protect your legs and helps to keep you warm when you're out riding. So those are some of the comfort features in the front. Well, what about the rear? 
not only is this thing quite adjustable, but of course it has all of the comfort features you're gonna want. That is a set of heated handlebars right there, of course. And then there's also hookups back here if you have a heated windshield or even if you have uh, a heated set of boots. Yes, you can get that too. There are two power hookups there, so you can use them if you're heated in the rear. Now, besides that, all this stuff adjusts. You can see there's these small handles down here and that allows you to lift the handle or lower the handle. So for different heights, different height passengers, you can make sure they're comfy. And even if you want a custom setup, one high on one side, one low on the other, you can do that. Now the seat back itself also adjusts like this. So, you know, any angle you need it for your back, you're gonna be able to find it. And then I gotta show you guys, this is my favorite bit of adjustability. Down here, there's this little handle right here. Whoops, hit the camera there, but boom, that whole seat back slides forward. Now, this is actually how I'll probably be using this machine a lot this season. Another little feature that I definitely get a kick out of, you can see the symbol right there on the brake handle. Yes, this thing has a Brembo brake, and uh, obviously for anyone in automotive, that's a fun little tie back to all those performance cars that use Brembo brakes. Now let me walk you through the functions of this display screen right here. So I'll zoom it in, and here we go. First of all, you can change up your top setting to your speed, RPM, your top speed, your average speed, and then also fuel economy, which is pretty cool. And then you can scroll down and change up your bottom setting, although this can only be speed or RPM. I like leaving it like that. And then finally, you can adjust this. So you have a trip A, you have a trip B, you have your hours meter or your hour trip, you have a clock, which is nice, and then you have your odometer. And once again, this sled has 9,121 kilometers on it. A couple convenient buttons over here. I also like how big and obvious the buttons are. So you have buttons for your throttle heater, or sorry, your uh, handlebar heater right here, up and down. You can see it changing there on the screen. And then on the right hand side, you have for your thumb grip, and that goes up and down as well. So really conveniently located, easy to use controls. And this yellow button here, that is to start the sled, but that is also to put the sled into reverse. And unlike the old versions of this system, the motor no longer has to shut down and then start back up when you put it in reverse. Admittedly, uh, this is an old man comfy couch sled. I'm entirely aware of that. And uh, I have no issue with that because this is seriously comfortable. It's so nice to have the backrest here and be able to sit back and just cruise down the trail. Now, no, this isn't the ultra aggressive, uh, you know, fun little darty sled. Like I said, it's gonna ride like a big comfy couch, but I'm totally cool with that. And then what's really great actually, because this is the Rev chassis, the whole thing with the Skidoo Rev chassis is this driver forward seating position, and it still actually has it. So, you know, I could go from here, laid back, relaxing, and then get right up on top of it here, really throw my weight into it. My weight is quite a bit uh, far forward, so my weight's really gonna affect the handling on the skis. It's not a bad mix here of sort of sport and grand touring. And then the riser on the handlebar is pretty low. So when I stand up, it's way down there. That's definitely something that uh, on a touring sled you're not gonna get is sort of a high handlebar. But in terms of this seating position, Comfort is the name of the game and this thing delivers it. And then I actually like the running boards too. They got some really nice uh, sticking points in them to make sure you can really dig your boots in and uh, make sure you're gonna be solid on your board. So let me start it up now. Here's a couple more things mention worth mentioning. Electric start on this sled. And like I said, this is my first sort of modern sled. Also my first four stroke that I've ever owned. It doesn't have a pull start. That was the news to me when I first bought it. The battery was dead. I said, okay, I'll just pull it. No, you cannot pull it. You have to use the electric start. And Skidoo also recommends that you do not boost this machine. If you get a dead battery, you are supposed to take that battery and make sure you charge it up out of the machine, then put it back in. Skidoo says, don't boost this four tech engine. So that's what I did. I listened to them. I took it out, charged it up for a couple days and I was good to go. So now guys, let me open the hood here and we can show you off. And it's not even really a hood. This is another interesting change from sort of those old school sleds. Skidoo has these two openings on the side now. You can see it down there rather than the sort of one main hood opening. And let's go ahead and take a look down in there. 
So on this side, on what would be the driver's side, if it was a vehicle, you have access to your belt and to your clutch. And I do have to say that is good access. There's your toolkit right there. So again, great that it comes with its own little toolkit. Now let's go over to the other side. And actually, while we go around the back, let me show you this too. This is the other thing that makes it a Grand Touring. Look at all this storage back here. That's tons of storage for a bag, a gas caddy, uh, whatever you might need to bring out on the trail with you. And of course, Skidoo is happy to sell you a ton of accessory bags that'll fit back here specifically. But even without the accessories, you have a nice amount of storage space right there. So now let's take a look at what we see when we open up this side of the engine bay. And now it's worth talking about the power. So this four stroke engine, oh, see there's your battery. That's what I had to pull out of there. There's the uh, exhaust can right there. So, and then a whole bunch of electronics, also your brake system. Um, yeah, so not bad access, although again, compared to older sleds, these new sleds, they really cram a lot of stuff under these hoods. So there's not a lot of space to work, that is for sure. Now, like I said, guys, this four stroke for power, when it was brand new, it was making 130 horsepower. Pretty respectable, not quite as much as the four strokes from Yamaha, I will admit. This thing still has tons of low end power and torque. So I have not been wanting for power. And maybe that's because I'm coming out of a 99 Yamaha. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 130 horsepower for me has been absolutely plenty. This thing hauls when you're going down the trail. So how about the price? Well, I obviously did not pay MSRP for it. I paid uh, just a little bit over 5,000 bucks and that was the other reason why I couldn't say no to this sled. It was just such a good deal. I bought it off a family friend and uh, at that price, that's an absolute steal. Now it does have 9,000 kilometers on it, so it's a bit of a high mileage unit, but for a four stroke, 9,000 K actually really isn't even that much. In the owner's manual, they don't recommend the first oil change until 6,000 K. So that should give you a good sense for just how long these engines are supposed to last. So when you look at all that stuff, I think I got a screaming deal on this sled and I cannot wait to see how it does all winter long. So guys, that's it for this video. Make sure you uh, go below, leave a comment, let me know what do you think of this uh, Skidoo Grand Touring. Do you like Skidoos? Do you not like Skidoos? Have you heard anything about the 1200? I want to hear if you have. And uh, as always, while you're down there, hit like, hit subscribe, and then come back to the channel because you know this sled is going to find its way back into another video. I'll update you on the reliability. And uh, as always, come back for the latest news, views, and real world reviews. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got a bit more booting around my backyard to do. <laughs> See ya.